not a lot of delay. So I'm uh, Yann Le Moulek, so from EDF R&D China, and I will present you some talk regarding some innovations that we can, can make a big change in the CSP industry in the next, uh, I don't know precisely, but five years, for example, which is a super critical CO2 cycle on all the applications we can imagine for this. So I will begin my presentation with a very short description of what is EDF because it's not a very well-known company uh, in the CSP industry right yet. So we are a plant operator, but not only, we also operate the network on sale and trade electricity in the world. So we are a state-owned company, mostly based in France, but operating in 26 countries, including China, for some, uh, if I remember correctly, six to s or seven plants coal and nuclear for now. So, as a group, we are the first worldwide nuclear operator and also the, the second largest uh, renewable operator in Europe. So, in total, the politic strategy is to keep this, uh, the power plant fleet to low carbon production and it's what we will try to do in the next years in China with the opening market, especially in, uh, in CSP. So for the R&D part, so we are more or less than 2,000 people working worldwide, so dedicated to all aspects of power generation, transportation and commercialization. So we are mainly based on uh, seven international centers, so three in France and four abroad, our um, domestic uh, country, which is uh, Germany, United Kingdom, Poland and China. So this is just a picture of where we are implemented. We have also uh, like a representative office in the US for, because we are one of the main contributors to the Electrical Power Research Institute. So, so sorry for this small uh, gap in the PowerPoint. So in EDF R&D China, in fact, we, we are focused on three key aspects, which is power generation, especially the clean coal power generation. We act as a competence center for the EF group in that topic. We also work in renewable, especially center in the CSP for now. And we also try to, to broad the utilization of our numerical simulation tool we use uh, in the nuclear industry, especially in France. Not very interesting for this presentation net, uh, today, but we also work a lot on the smart grid and integration of renewable in the grid, and also on demand management for helping city to shape their energy planning in the future. And we have also an outsourcing company or subsidiary in order to find some good innovation everywhere in the world and especially in China. So regarding CSP, for now we enter this uh, research topic in um, in, uh, in China in 2011 with a collaboration with CISI, so which is a, with, with the well-known battling demonstration pilot plant. So we, we enter this in order to have some um, good vision of the planning and execution of experimental campaign, to have also uh, a platform to test some new technology and to test some control strategy. E each time we place ourselves as a plant operator, so we want to know how what is the difficulty to operate this plant and how we can make it simpler for the future operator. And we also develop through this some, uh, some intern capacity in the plant modeling, especially in dynamic modeling, in order to optimize the operation, to develop some new control strategy and to help for the commissioning aspect. So that's all from the company presentation. So now I will try to describe you what is the supercritical CO2 cycle. And after I will try to convince you that we are not so far from a demonstration time, and you will see that. So, supercritical CO2 brighton cycle, it's quite a new technology on the market right now. Um, so, the main interest, the CO2 turbo machinery on cycle have a higher efficiency than the steam power you can, uh, you can buy, mostly by 10 to 20 percent regarding of the temperature, you should just operate above 500 degree. You have very high capacity turbo machinery. In fact, you, you divide the volume by a factor of 50. So it's almost too small to be seen on a global uh, isometric uh, drawing. And in fact, the performance is very high due to the very conven convenient thermophysical property. Also, CO2 is very cheap. It's chemically inert, it's non-flammable, so it's quite easy to use. 
and we are quite convinced of the performance of the real thing because CO2 is very well characterized, so we have not uncertainty regarding the data we use. Obviously, there is two main drawbacks for now. One, it's a low technology maturity. You cannot purchase it now on the market. And the other one, it's quite corrosive about, above 500 degrees. But for CSP application, it's not a problem for us because either we go for parabolic trough technology, we are below 500 degrees, or if we go for molten salt technology, anyway, we already use molten salt, which is very corrosive. So we already use a high quality material you can need. And also CSP, is quite a medium-sized power system, so it's very, uh, it's an ideal case for a supercritical CO2 cycle in the range of 50 to 100 megawatt. It's clearly the, what we want to, to use. So in short term, we will use it as a pure replacement of the steam cycle, uh, be directly uh, coupled with a thermal oil system or directly coupled with a molten salt system. So roughly. This uh, picture shows how it works. So you have a main compressor, and the CO2 is roughly at 30 degrees on 75 bars. Then you compress it above 200 bars. So in this example, you are at 250 bars. And due to the CO2 property, in fact, it don't eat that much. That's why it's efficient. Then you preheat your CO2 in a two heat exchanger in order to reach almost 400 degrees, and then you enter in your boiler. So in that case, for simplification, I choose 600 degrees, but we can change the parameter. And after the CO2 is expanded, but during the expansion, the temperature does not drop that much because the compression ratio is only three. So you need the two heat exchanger in order to recover the heat in your CO2 to cool it up to 70 degrees. And then in order to improve the efficiency, you have a secondary compressor that help, in fact, to balance the thermal pinch in the two economizer. Otherwise, yes, there is a very strong imbalance. So at the end, you have a, for this cycle, you have an efficiency of 46.5%. And for a 250 megawatt electrical power produced, and you use for this 1,500 uh, 1, kilogram per second of CO2, which is roughly 10 times the amount of uh, CO2 compared to the, wat the water you should use for the same power. But at the same time, you are at very higher pressure, so the, the real flow rate is not really changed. So, so right now, during the two last year, in fact, there is a very quick development of this technology. Now, if you want to purchase a 450 degree cycle, it's already commercial. You can find some uh, US companies selling the system. But also in the world, you have four large-scale pilot plants, uh, three in the US and one in China, that try to go up to 600 degrees on 300 bar. So clearly, it's a, it's a target we want for high power generation. And in fact, also, the, the knowledge regarding this cycle is more and more uh, up-to-date due to the very high number of experimental loop at large scale, so below one megawatt, that you can see in every university and technology center in the world. So all key equipment can be yet manufactured. Uh, in February, General Electric shows the first prototype of 10 megawatt uh, turbine. On, on the picture at the rightmost side, you see the Ecogen unit, so it's a 400, it's for 450, degree 8 megawatt electrical unit. So it's it contained within two, two skids of this size, so it's very compact. And in the, in the bottom you can see a sketch of uh, the pilot plant which will be developed in China in normally uh, next year. So at the moment, in fact, uh, within EDF we developed the tool in order to make the pre-design, in fact on the pre-feasibility study regarding the, the turbine uh, design and the compressor design, turbo machinery in fact, but also all the basic equipment for sizing heat exchanger with molten salt, with radiative if you want to go for a, a SCO2 receiver, solar receiver, but also especially the, the heat transfer uh, equipment you need in the cycle to keep the efficiency high which is normally we use some pretty circuit heat exchanger, but right now the industrial supply chain is not up to, to the capacity of produce the, this, the, size, the size we need. So we go also for tube and shell alternative in short term for demonstrating the system. So regarding the piping system, it's, very, it's quite challenging due to the very high amount of CO2. 
And also for material selection, right now we can already build something with some conservative approach, even if it's quite, it can be quite expensive at large scale. But right now there is a lot of innovation developed by special metal on Valorec, to the best of my knowledge, for going for a cheaper material. And also you have a quite a challenging design for the CO2 mass inventory management, because when you eat a close Brighton loop, in fact, the, the CO2 will expand and you need to withdraw part of your CO2 from the loop, otherwise it will build some very high pressure. It's very different to a steam cycle when you have a DAI router in order to, to keep, to have the, um, it's, a, it's a mass storage. You can store some water in it and when you, you need more steam, you increase the pump uh, capacity and then you will uh, withdraw part of the water in a closed cycle. It's not feasible, so you need some, a new, new system. We also make some, a lot of design study regarding the, which can be the best cycle option for, for, for two solar thermal power, especially to match the most, have some, to match the, with the best capacity, the molten salt heat storage, because we have specific temperature range of operation. So at the end, it was the, so the recompression cycle, the one I, I presented you before, with no reheat and with uh, the highest pressure ratio we can afford regarding material issue, which is the best average solution. But obviously, for each application, the cycle needs to be re-optimized. So, and also, you can have another option, which is, which is to go for like a topping cycle. In fact, you keep your steam cycle on your your, your molten salt storage, but you use SCO2 in your receiver just to produce additional power during the day and you will store all the remaining power in the molten salt. This just increases the efficiency of your overall system but adds the cost to have a share of your electricity which is not dispatchable, roughly between 8 to 12 percent. But for this, you need a new solar receiver design, but you don't need any new heat exchanger. So it can be an interesting trade-off for short-term implementation. So what's the interest, in fact? We tried to make a thorough evaluation. And in fact, the power block reduction will, the power block cost will be reduced by 40% roughly, because your turbine will be especially small. You will buy some larger heat exchanger in your, in your loop, that's for sure. But also, in CSP, we go for dry cooling. And the, the super critical CO2 at 80 bars will, will give some uh, smaller design for your dry cooler or your dry condenser. During the storage, in fact, we have higher efficiency, so we can reduce a little bit our storage capacity. We have also a simpler design because we, it's, super critical CO2 is a gas, so you don't need a preheater, evaporator, superheater, and reheater. In fact, you have just one heat exchanger. And you have the, the but the bad part, in fact, you will not operate with the same temperature range than water, so you will have a, high, a little higher salt quantity for storing the same amount of power. So at the end, roughly, the cost doesn't change significantly. And for all other equipment, because you will increase the efficiency by 10%, you will reduce your solar field by 10%, you will reduce approximately everything by 10%. So at the end, you can expect to have roughly 16% reduction, so after it's need to be done for, in reality to, come to, to validate this value, but it's a range of magnitude we can expect. And in the second term, we can expect 10 more percent reduction if we successfully go for higher temperature, which is very difficult with water due to the pressure we need to achieve, which is not the case in, for this cycle, but for this we need a better heat, uh, heat transfer thermal storage option. So as a conclusion of my presentation, so there is two things. One, right now we are at the step where we need to go for some uh, demonstration program. So the paper study is more or less uh, over. Right now we, we need to push forward for the real equipment uh, design, manufacturing and testing. So the, we need the first step for with a large scale testing loop where IDF is already uh, involved but want to quicker the process. And after there will be some uh, real engineering thing for going for a demo loop, which is roughly uh, 50, 20 to 50 megawatt scale. So it's, if, mm -hmm. it's almost a scale one for, for CSP. And after, if, the, if it's successful, we can go for a commercial option, 
which is for the EDF point of view is around 100 megawatt or more. Or in parallel, obviously, there is a lot, another, a lot of other side topics that can be addressed, but as ev in every technology, you can always optimize. One key point I want to emphasize, it's a cold storage, because supercritical soup benefit especially to have a very cool temperature, um, uh, cold source temperature, better than water, for sure. So if we go for a full dispatchable CSP during the peak time at night, uh, in fact, we will have an increase of efficiency, and perhaps it can be interesting also if we want to produce power during the day to store some night uh, cold in some uh, in some hives, for example. And this can be especially interesting for the Chinese market because the uh, place where we aim, aim to develop CSP is very very cold at night, and so it's a good match of, uh, of technology. So right now, well, what we think as a final conclusion, we think it's a key opportunity for, for CSP, and there is a very quick technological development. It has really changed in the two last year. So it's a multi-field technology. You can also imagine to use it on your combined gas cycle on, or your coal-fired power plant. And clearly, uh, not from my world, but from the DOE world, it's a game-changing technology. So right now, today, all equipment can be manufactured, not probably optimized, but you can build something for demonstration. And clearly, the time to market will approach quite quickly. So thank you for your attention. And uh, if you have any questions, I can try to answer them.